Hello everyone, and today I got a cool video for you guys. In today's video, we're going to be doing the character trial aptitude showcase for Akaron. She is a lightning nihility character who is very, very powerful in the game. She's one of the strongest DPSs in the game, up there with a Jing Li Yu. And I forget there was another character, but she works very well in Pure Fiction, and she works extremely well in Memory of Chaos, and she works well in just about everything in the game. So it makes things, makes grinding a whole lot easier. So let's actually start this trial so we can actually see what she can do. I have, from what I will tell you, I do have E2 Acheron. She is very powerful. Uh, E2 allows her to have, instead of having, if you want the maximum damage output you can do with her, you usually got to have two other Nihility characters, but if you get her to E2, it goes down by one. You don't really need it. I did it because I was going for Gallagher because I want more Gallagher's because Gallagher's pretty busted in his own right as a healer also. So let's, but this video is going to be focused on Acheron. So let's do this. So Acheron, she likes to inflict debuffs on enemies, the game charges, and unleashes the ultimate. So it's called Slash Dreams that these charges that she gets. So whenever you inflict de any unit, that be anybody, that be even the enemy, inflicts debuffs on themselves, she gains Slash Dreams, which once she gets nine, she can do her ultimate. You can do her ultimate so many times if you do it in a specific way. You can pull out her ultimate a lot, more than every any other character. You don't have to worry about farming energy rope either. You don't need that. She doesn't work. The only thing she doesn't work with is if certain bosses or certain uh, stages give out energy to everybody to make their ultimate make their ultimate uh, as soon as they start the fight they get the ultimate it will not work with acheron because hers is built differently than everybody else's so she likes to inflict debuffs on enemy and gains charges uh the ultimate ignores enemy weakness types and reduces toughness and reduces the enemy's all type resistance and this technique can instantly defeat enemies so if you get her to instantly e6 the all type res works on her basic attack and her skill it's meaning that you are doing ultimate damage now since her basic is considered ultimate damage and her skills considered ultimate damage so she's always inflicting ultimate which is pretty busted she is a very powerful character so if you had a chance to get her to e6 this would have been the perfect chance to get her to e6 uh, but hey, it costs money. It's 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 a it is expensive <laughs> to get her. I got her to E6 with only a hundred and twenty some pulls, 120 and 130, so which is good. And I got her in the first 10 because I showed it in my last video on how to get her guaranteed, and I got her guaranteed. So if you did lose the 50-50 on Acheron and you don't have any more pulls, I say start saving up for the next DPS character because Jing Liu is on the next banner. So you can get her with um, Aventurine, or you can go for Aventurine. You either, if you lost, you do guarantee one of those two if you wanted to or whatever. So uh, so let's read her basic attack. She deals lightning damage equal to 90% of Acheron's attack to a single target enemy. Her skill gains one point of Slash Dream, inflicting one stacks of Crimson Knot on a single target enemy, dealing lightning damage equal to 140% of Acheron's attack to target, as well as lightning damage equal to 52% of Acheron's attack to adjacent targets. This is where her ultimate comes into play. There's a lot here for this ultimate. So let's take the and look. So sequentially unleashes Rainblade three times and Stingy and Resurge one time, dealing lightning damage up to 334% of Akron's attack to a single target enemy, as well as lightning damage up to 270% of Akron's attack to other targets. Rainblade deals lightning damage equal to 21.6% of Akron's attack to a single target enemy and removes up to three stacks of Crimson Knot from the target. When Crimson Knot is removed, immediately deals lightning damage equal to 13.5% of Akron's attack to all enemies. For every stack of Crimson Knot removed this way, damage multipliers additionally increase up to a maximum of 54%. So whenever you do her ultimate, she's increasing her damage. 
And then Stingy and Resurge deals lightning damage equal to 108% of Akron's attack to all enemies and removes all Crimson Knot. Crimson Knot cannot be applied to enemies during the ultimate. So with Crimson Knot stacks, they are gained by her talent. And when they are gained, you can remove uh, when she does damage or if all enemies die and they... They, the Crimson Knots will still be inflicted no matter what you do. They will not go away. They basically will be there at all times. They will always be at max. You will always get nine. Uh, you'll always get the max number all the time. So, uh, the bonus effect, the Thunder Core. When Rainblade from Akron's ultimate hits enemy targets with Crimson Knot, her damage increases by 30%, stacking up three times and lasting for three turns. When Stingy and Research triggers additional, additionally deals damage for six times, each time dealing lightning damage equal to 25% of Akron's attack to a single random enemy and is viewed as part as ultimate damage, which is pretty, got, uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty darn powerful. She is fucking powerful. She's very powerful. Her talent. When Slash Dream reaches nine points, the ultimate can be activated. During the ultimate, reduce enemy's toughness regardless of weakness types and reduces all enemies' all type resistance by 17%, lasting until the end of the ultimate. When, an at, when any unit inflicts a debuff on enemy target while using their ability, Acheron gains one point of Slash Dreams <laughs> and inflicts one stack of Crimson Knot on the target. If debuffs are inflicted on multiple targets, then one stack of Crimson Knot will be inflicted on the enemy target with the most Crimson Knot stacks. So, also keep in mind, if you pair her with Black Swan, because Black Swan likes to just instantly put debuffs on the guys, that will only be considered one. If there's like five dudes, it's all considered one, unless you do... Um, Unless you have single individually single target debuffs, then it will build up faster that way because now everyone is individually putting on a debuff. She works very well with Gallagher, any preservation unit that has trend of the universal market. She works well with Black Swan. She works well with all Nihility characters also. So just keep that in mind whenever you play or decide her. Everyone should be have her by now. It's been the end of the month. I usually do these at the end of the month, not at the beginning of the month when all the hype is. And that's just me. This effect can only trigger once for every ability used. After, your enemy tar after an enemy target exits the field or gets defeated by any unit while Acheron's on the field, their Crimson Knot stack will be transferred to the enemy target with the most Crimson Knot stacks on the field. So let's read her bonus effects. These are get You get these from her traces. One's at level 50, the other's at level 80, or whatever. It's between, like, level 20 or level 80. It's it's easy, but you once you do, you can get it up there. So, the Red Oni. When the battle starts, immediately gains 5 points of Slash Dream and applies 5 stacks of Crimson Knot to a random enemy. So, if you try playing her at level 1 with nothing on it, it's pretty fun if you do it sometimes. I do that sometimes. When, um... When Slash Dream reaches its upper limit for every point of Slash Dream that exceeds that limit, gains one stack of Quadrilent Ascendance. Enables Quadrilent Ascendance to stack up three times. So you can get an extra if you go past the Slash Dream amount. So you can keep going higher, but as soon as you get it, you want to do the ultimate. When there's one or two Nihility characters other than Acheron in the team, the damage dealt by Acheron's basic attack, skill, and ultimate damage is increased to 115% or 160%. So if you get her to E2, it's 160%, which is pretty cool. Her technique immediately attacks the enemy. At the start of each wave, gaze one quadru quadruvalent ascendance <laughs> daily lightning damage equal to 200% of Acheron's attack to all enemies and reducing toughness of all enemies irrespectively of we uh, weakness types. When breaking weaknesses triggers the lightning weakness break effect. Quadrilent ascendance after using the ultimate Acheron gains pull one points of slash dream and inflicts one stack of crimson knot on a single random enemy. 
If, a tar if attacking a normal enemy immediately defeats them without entering combat when not hitting enemies. No technique points are consumed if you are not hitting any enemy. So that means you can keep using it as forever as you want as long as you got it. As long as you still have one point. Whew. Reading all that, that's a huge paragraph. It's like I'm reading Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> So, along the passing shore is the light cone. I have her S1. I pulled this light cone in the first 10 pull also. It was really nice. This is the only light cone that does crit damage for nihility characters. And it's another light cone that puts on another debuff. So if you want to use this with other characters, you can. You just decide and decide which one. It's up to you. You play however, play however you want to play, my guy. Or anybody who's watching this. So, increase the wearer's crit damage by 36%. When the wearer hits the enemy target, inflicts Mirage Fizzle on the enemy, lasting for one turn. Each time the wearer is attacked, this effect can only be triggered one time on each target. The wearer deals 24% increased damage to targets afflicted with Mirage Fizzle, and the damage dealt by the wearer's ultimate additionally increases by 24%. Now, let's take a look at her traces. They are never maxed out. They like to just do 8 and not 10. I don't know why. They just don't do 10. It's a little buggy. Uh, these are her relics. Uh, I have the same relics on here. But if you're doing pure fiction, you can switch these out for the other one that came with. Called the Izumuni one. Not the Izumo, but the other ones. They work extremely well with her. It works very, very well. And then let's take a look at her Eidolons. So when dealing damage to debuff enemies, increase the crit rate by 18%. So as long as they got a debuff, her crit rate gets increased by 18. The number of Nihility Carries required by the Abyss, it's one, so you don't need two. Um, this is just more damage. I mean, not more damage, but it increases the percentage. Uh, when an enemy target enters combat, inflicts them with ultimate damage vulnerability, increasing the amount of damage they take by 8%, which is really good. And then E6 turns all her basic attack, increases ultimate damage and her all type resistance by 20%. And then her basic attack and skill become ultimate damage and will be considered ultimate damage once you get her E6, which is really cool. I have some friends on here that have E6 Acheron, and it's really fun to use them. <laughs> it's really, really fun. So let's take a look at Pela. We already know what she does. You already have her, or you should have her by now. Or Sampo, you already should have him, if you're using him at all. And then the main character, this is uh, her name, Stell. Or you have the other guy, if you wanted the other dude, but I don't gone with Stell. So let's do this. So you can see, And then boom, <laughs> you can do that. And it makes grinding for items so much easier. So if you do it consecutively, you can hit all three. Like that. And then we're gonna get here. So it's like a big dude. So you can see she's at six stacks. Still have the upper hand? She's at six. We're gonna do playlist skill. And then we're going to do the Sampo's basic attack. Then we're gonna activate this. We got her ultimate because taunting is a debuff. In this mode, if you hit this button, you can take a look at the characters too, and you can see what she looks like up here, which is pretty cool. That most people don't do. I don't know. Uh, most I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. So she's gonna be pretty darn strong. They're gonna. They're all gonna die except him. He's gonna probably survive this. did 231 damage. That gains the stack. 
deck games are stacked because they're individual. They're not doing it all at once. He's gonna do his... Oh, I thought he was gonna do his stupid fire move that does a lot of damage. We don't want him to do his stupid fire move, so we're gonna kill him now. All right, so we're gonna do her skill. We're gonna activate Pela's ultimate to put on a defense shredding buff. Ooh, it's the 37% plus the 16%. We're gonna have Sampo do his. She's at eight Crimson stacks uh, right now. Oh no, not Crimson, Slash Dreams. Oh, okay, they're at both. Eight. We're at nine, so we're gonna just do her ultimate. You could do her ultimate, but it's like this. She does not float up there because it would have been awesome if it shows. And there you go. That is Acheron. So if you guys like this video, like and subscribe. It's This video is here for anybody who wants information just in case for if they take a very long time to rerun the character banner for Acheron, which will probably be so. But yeah, because... Uh, See you guys next time, and uh, peace out. Thanks for watching.